hello friends so in this section uh, we'll discuss the defecation reflex so before going to the main topic let's take a look at the simple diagram so as you can see this is here this is a section of spinal cord and this is a part of the gastrointestinal tract as you can see this is the colon so this is the descending colon here this s-shaped part is the rectum and these are the parts of the anus internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter okay so the the main parts which take part actually in the defecation reflex these are the two sphincters of the anus that's internal and external anal sphincter okay so let's uh, take a look at these so there are two sphincters we have the internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter okay now among these two sphincters the internal anal sphincter is under involuntary control okay and the external anal sphincter is under voluntary control now the external anal sphincter here this shaded part is the external anal sphincter it's under voluntary control and it's supplied by pudendal nerve it's a somatic nerve which is called as the pudendal nerve so let's try draw the diagrams at the same time so let's complete the diagram this nerve here is pudendal nerve okay pudendal nerve the internal anal sphincter is uh, on the other hand it's under involuntary control and it's supplied by autonomic nervous system so it has both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic supply and the parasympathetic supply it is meant to facilitate defecation and the sympathetic system it decreases or inhibits the process of defecation so process of defecation will be facilitated only when there will be relaxation of internal anal sphincter that means parasympathetic supply causes relaxation and sympathetic supply it causes contraction of internal anal sphincter okay so apart from these two these are the uh, the motor supply apart from these we there are uh, sensory nerves as well okay so let's draw these there are sensory nerves all over rectum colon so we have sensory nerves these sensory nerves they go to the spinal cord through the dorsal this is the dorsal root dorsal horn of the spinal cord they enter into the spinal cord and from here the fibers of the okay so this fibers of the autonomic nervous system arise and which go and they supply the internal anal sphincter okay they supply the internal anal sphincter okay so this is how <coughs> the nerve supply of the internal and external anal sphincter is okay now let's try to understand defecation reflex okay so defecation reflex it starts whenever <coughs> so let's first label this diagram and this is the sensory nerve and these are the parasympathetic nerves okay so the defecation reflex it starts when there is distension of rectum so this is the rectum whenever there is uh, fecal matter in the rectum it exerts pressure on the wall of the rectum and that results in distension and this uh, this stretch this sensation is carried through the sensory nerves okay it's carried through the sensory nerves which finally reach into the center and center is the spinal cord mainly the sacral segment of spinal cord okay mainly the sacral segment of the spinal cord so this these are carried through efferents to center and central center here is the spinal cord mainly the sacral segment of the spinal cord <coughs> and from sacral segment of the spinal cord the parasympathetic fibers arise so these fibers these are parasympathetic fibers and they supply the internal anal sphincter and they cause relaxation of the internal anal sphincter as you can see here parasympathetic fibers they facilitate defecation by causing relaxation so there is activation of parasympathetic nervous system and this activation results in relaxation of internal 
and a sprinter now the process of defecation will occur when there will be relaxation of external anal sphincter as well and the relaxation of external anal sphincter occurs external anal sphincter it occurs voluntarily depending on the conditions okay whenever the conditions whenever the timing and the environmental conditions are perfect the there is relaxation of external anal sphincter and this results in defecation okay so this is how the pathway of defecation reflect initially there is distension after the impulses they go along the sensory nerves they reach the center that's the spinal cord mainly the sacral segment and from there the parasympathetic fibers arise which cause relaxation of internal anal sphincter and then there will be relaxation of external anal sphincter uh, based on voluntary control which will result in defecation this is going to result in defecation okay so this is the main defecation reflex two important points that one should remember is when the rectal pressure when it becomes 18 millimeters of mercury at that point of time there will be urge to defecate and another important point when rectal pressure becomes 55 millimeters of mercury or more that results in swelling so what is swelling swelling means a uh, a person cannot hold the fecal matter beyond this point so beyond this point a person will not be able to hold the fecal matter uh, this is called as swelling and the rectal pressure is 55 millimeters of mercury so that's all about defecation reflex.